Hey, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brooke. Thank you for joining. If you are new here, this is a channel where you will see a lot of cattails and house plants. So if you haven't yet, be sure and subscribe to my channel so you can be up to date on all my latest videos. If you are a recurring viewer, thanks so much for coming back and viewing another cat's tail right here. Today, I wanted to go through and share my like top variegated house plants that I personally own and love and not a cat's tail. Variegation and variegated plants are incredibly popular right now. And there are a few different types of variegation that you can get. You could get like an elbow monstera, which is an um, which is an um, which is a wow, unstable variegation. Sorry. Or you could get a monstera Thai constellation, which is a stable variegation. You could also get like a heart leaf um string of hearts, sorry, string of hearts that has a stable variegation, or you could get a burly marks, which has a more stable variegation, philodendron. So there are like a lot of plants out there currently that have stable variegations and unstable variegations. So if you do have a plant and you have purchased it for the variegation, or you are looking at a plant and purchasing it for the variegation, I would check to see if it is a stable one or unstable, because it can be disappointing when it's an unstable variegation you pay a lot of money for this plant because some variegated plants are extremely high cost these days and you get it and you come home and the variegation just like goes away. So be sure and check which variegation you have. The ones that I am sharing today are primarily stable variegations. I have had these plants for quite a few months and have never seen a revert. Um, I do own plants that I believe have reverted that I will not be sharing um, because again, I think that they have reverted. For instance, one of them is my Jose Bono. I had variegation at the beginning and I have done a lot of research and read that this plant does not like revert, but I, I'm going to say it's reverted or something is happening because it is all green. There is no variegation on it. The um, variegation that did like come on the leaf when I bought it is gone now, which is also common. If you have a variegated plant, you might see a lot of variegation at first. There might be like a really bright variegation um, and that can harden off as it grows, which is normal for leaves in general. If you see a, just a plain green leaf, they will harden off as they grow. And so some of those variegation spots can be lost. Um, but anyways, I won't be sharing any of that. I'm just going to be sharing my favorite variegated plants. So let's dig in. The first one is actually a new plant to my collection or new-ish. I got this over the summer and it was in a plant store. I didn't really know of it. It wasn't on the lookout for it, but the variegation on it got me. So this is the philodendron Pariso Verde. And what sold me was this leaf right here. This is such a pretty variegation. I personally like more subtle variegations, I would say, or closer, um, what, a, what, what do you call this? Like it is close to a real leaf. It is not an elbow, it's not white. It's not gonna die off um, eventually like an elbow could, um, so, or a white leaf bow, or a white leaf could. So this is like child, very pretty subtle variegation but it's beautiful and I really love the foliage, the long leaves with the lobes. And so this is the newest leaf and you can see here that it has very subtle variegation, which again is a point to bring up. So this one doesn't have it. This is almost like a mint color and it has light variegation, but this is a point. This plant's variegation depends on temperature. So that was a fascinating fact. Again, I had not researched these. I didn't know about the plant, but come to find out that the variegation on these depends on the temperature of your house. So the hotter it is, the more variegation, um, like the mint green and the lightness will come through. The cooler that it is, the leaves will become more like green and dark and solid and not so variegated. So that's a fascinating fact. So if you own one of these plants or you are looking at one, just know that, yeah, these go based off of temperature. So it is very cold in my house. It is like 73. That's why I'm wearing a sweatshirt. It's probably 102 outside. So this guy sits on the top of my um, shelf in my office and is lit by a Sansi grow light. And it does sit by an air duct. So I have that closed off so it doesn't push out a lot of air, but it's still pretty chilly in there. 
it's still pretty chilly in there for this guy. So his variegation on it has become more subtle and just that dark green patchy um, variegation. But otherwise, I really love this plant. I still like the dark green, like splashy um, patches. It's very beautiful. The leaves on it are very gorgeous. And so I am happy. I love this plant. I think it's a very easy to care for plant. It needs watered. I just water it when the soil is dry. But otherwise, it's been very easy going and it's pushing out a new growth point. So I love this plant. This is number one, the Pariso Verde. Number two, and pretty much probably the number one on my list, if you've been here at all, you will know, is my Philodendron Burley Marks. Can't talk about it enough. Okay, I'm sorry. I love this plant. This is by far one of my most like prized plants that I own. Um, so yes, this is a variegation. It is stable. It is the very, you know, yellowy green patchy um, leaf. So this is not off of temperature, but it does sit under a grow light. Um, these are the Barina T5s. And I have never taken it out of that. I've never given it um, a lower light situation. And so I don't know how it would produce the variegation if it didn't sit under this grow light. Um, you can see here that all of the new foliage is this really bright yellow lime color. And all of the older foliage is this darker green. And so I got this from Fitzgerald's Tropicals. Tropics? on um, Instagram. They have a pop-up shop every month in Dallas at the North Haven Gardens. And so that's where I picked this one up because it is a pricey plant and it is a very uncommon plant. So I got it from them luckily for a low cost and it has grown to this. I believe it was like four leaves when I first got it. And now it's just this bubbly little fun plant. So I love it. I think it's a very easy grower. Um, again, I keep it under my grow light, but I water it when the soil is completely dry. This is a number one plant. Like if you buy a variegated plant and are looking to spend money, buy this one, buy it. This is the only time I will influence you on to buy a plant, but I love this plant. Another plant that is semi newer to my collection that I really fell in love with and I did not expect it um, is this Ficus Shibriana. So these, I think last year came out like really heavy, like hit the market hard and were such a popular plant and were really expensive. And so I kind of just watched and like saw the freak out, but never was intrigued by them. Um, I mean, beautiful plant. Definitely the variegation is just stunning, but it wasn't something that I was going to pine after and be purchasing. Number one, ficus require extreme amounts of light. So if you are going to get one of these, they are trees. And so they need the brightest light possible. And I just knew that I wasn't going to do that or bother with it. At the time, I didn't have a grow light set up. And so I passed on it. I saw it in stores um, for, again, a high cost. But a couple of months ago, we visited plants and planters in Dallas, I believe, or Richardson, and they had one for 20 bucks. And so it was a little guy, but it had three shoots in it. And so I was like, you know what, for $20, I'll try it because I have a Brina grow light set up. I'll stick it under that and I'll see what happens. And I really love this plant. I am so excited every time a new leaf comes out because it's beautiful variegation. It's again, it's got lime, it's got white, it's got dark green, light green, pink in it, um, a little bit of like tinted yellow. And so it's really stunning plant. I do not know what the cross is, but I can imagine it's probably something with a teneki because again, the stems and the petioles um, and the veining are pink when they come out like fresh and brand new. Again, just like I mentioned earlier, these leaves won't stay this white. They do harden off to a darker, like darker greenish color. I'm trying to find out oh, there it is, sorry. They harden off. So that white doesn't stay as white as it is right now. It does harden off, but the variegation on it is still beautiful. So this guy, again, I think it's a great little variegated plant. It's very staple to me. I have not seen it revert, but again, I haven't given it a chance to be like not under my Purina grow lights. Um, but again, these are trees, so you're not going to want to do that. You're either going to want to put them in a south or west facing window or give them a grow light to supplement because they will not grow well if you don't. I do um, water it when the soil is completely dry and it doesn't seem to bother it. I have not really lost any leaves. I don't think I've lost any leaves. There were leaves on it that were, you know, that's messed up. That's been there. Um, I haven't just haven't taken it off, but there were a few other ones that were like that, that I did remove. Otherwise it's done just fine. So 
I just got, just, just, just blew out. But this is the third on my list of variegated plants that I love. The fourth one, which, yeah, I'll get it all. Oh my gosh. Okay, good. Okay, saved that plant. But the fourth one on my list, yeah, right? One, two, three, four, good, is my variegated epipremnum elbow. Epipremnum, pothos, whatever you want to call it. But this guy is beautiful. I have chopped it back and propagated it, but the foliage is stunning. It is gorgeous. Now, this is one of those plants that I have found it does need humidity. And so these white patches on it that you see are beautiful and gorgeous, and I love them, but they don't last unless you give it the right humidity and you keep your watering um, consistent. So I water this once the soil is like just dry, probably an inch, at the, or I'm sorry, an inch from being dry pretty much so, where the bottom inch is still wet and then I will water it. And now I do have this on a moss ball because these are climbers. And so this guy has taken off. It is crazy how much this has grown since I purchased it. There are two plants in this one pot, but it is a really proficient grower. And so you can see here, this is the newest leaf. It's got little fenestrations. Now I will also tell you that the variegation on this highly depends on your lighting. I did have it over here on this side of the the shelving unit which is about like six feet eight feet back from a southwest facing window and it did not do well so it started producing this really dark green solid foliage so i would say that this is an unstable variegation unless given the correct lighting situation so i have put it back in my southwest facing window so it sits right next to it and it has done extremely well cat's getting my air plants he keeps killing these specific ones anyways give it to you, whatever. But anyways, so yes, you can see here that the foliage on bottom is darker because again, this is when I didn't have it in a southwest facing window. And so as you can see, as it grows up and closer to the light, the variegation becomes way more defined in this um, white patch. So you can see here, this is like pure white. This is like a cream. That's a beautiful plant, easy to grow. They're coming down in cost so much. I got this from the Titsy Gardener in Canton and it was a really low cost. Um, I also bought the other one at Suburban Plant or Suburban Gardens, Suburban Plants maybe in Mesquite. If you see one, I would definitely pick it up because it is such a beautiful plant, easy to grow. This is definitely a beginner plant um, because again, even if you put it in like the lower light situations, it's still going to produce a green and like splotchy variegation and it's incredibly easy to grow. I have forgotten to water it a couple times and it doesn't mind it at all, just like any other pothos. Now, this is probably going to be the most subtle variegation that I have in my collection, but it is this Philodendron Painted Lady. By far one of my most favorite plants. It is an incredibly easy grower. I do wonder though, now that I own the Pariso Verde and understand that it is a temperature-based variegation, if this isn't the same, because I have seen tons of philodendron painted ladies in person and they have very light lime green leaves and their variegation is dark, but mine is the dark variegation with the lime green variegation. Wow. That I, yeah, that rhymed. Anyways, this guy, he is a fast and easy grower. I purchased this again from Plants and Planters in um, Richardson, Texas, and I purchased it as a small little guy and it has grown to this. It does sit under my T5 Barina grow light. So that's how I know like it's not the light that I'm giving it because it's getting as much light as I'm giving my Burley Marks and my um, Pariso Verde. But this guy, he just sticks to the subtle um, you know, again, lime green painted variegation. Either way, this is a beautiful plant and I really enjoy it. The petioles are pink and the greens. And so it's such a beautiful, easy grower and I really love it. But I am curious to see and maybe do some more research to see if it is a um, temperature based variegation. And maybe that's why mine isn't getting as lime as some of the others that I've seen. Okay, I have two more on my list and a lot more variegated plants than this, but these again made the top marks, I would say for me. So which one do I want to go with? Okay, I'm going to go with this one. This is the sixth on my list and it is the Syngonium Elbow. Now this was a wishlist plant. 
I also purchased this from um, Tro Fitzgerald Tropics um, in the Dallas pop-up shop. And at the same time, I purchased the Burley Marks and it's grown so much. I bought this as a little plug. I bought both of them as little plugs. And so this one, I believe had like, again, four or five leaves, but it has grown to this lush little plant it is today. So this guy has three plugs in him, one of which is all white. And so that's the other half of variegation is if you are looking for an elbow, specifically the Monstera, the, um, the Syngonium elbow, even the um, Monstera, why can't I think of it, Ansonii elbows, you really have to beware of what you're purchasing because if you are purchasing a plant that has a majority of white leaves, there's a high chance that that plant could be all white and then it will not survive. So plants must have at least some green on them to survive and to keep producing new leaves. But when you get a, a situation like this, where this whole section is just producing like the white leaves, this is a half moon or like close enough to a half moon and it's beautiful i love this leaf but this one has not grown so this section specifically you can see where i've taken off a lot of the leaves and the foliage they've died, all died off because they are white and so it cannot sustain itself and so this portion of the plant is kind of just like producing these white leaves then dies off produces more light leaves and dies off versus the other section is producing a good amount of like half and half. So this is a half moon right there. And then you've got this beautiful original leaf right there. And so this is what you want. That's what I want at least, is this subtle splash of white and green, like a good combination, a good balance of both so that it sustains itself and it grows to this. Again, this guy is just gonna stay like this probably always unless I cut it off and propagate it, which I could. Now this shoot right here is finally taking off and it is growing out as well. But you can see here, this is just green. So this is where the variegation stopped. So it did have variegation on at the beginning, but it is not pushing out. It is reverted back and is now just pushing out straight green leaves. So this is a plant that is definitely not a stable variegation. It depends on just what you get. And I assume it depends on the light, but I have it sitting again on this side of a Southwest facing window and it's produced this variegation just fine, which I'm happy with. I think it's beautiful and I really love it. And so I'm okay with that. But if you did want it to have higher variegation and higher white, you're going to need to move it. You're going to need to move it closer to a light source and make sure your humidity is up so that these white leaves can last and sustain and then hopefully produce more. So this guy is number six. Last but not really least is this Monstera um, Stanleyana elbow. Now this guy is very beautiful. I again purchased this on a whim from Plants and Planters at the same time that I purchased my um, philodendron painted lady. I don't really collect a lot of like outside of Monstera Deliciosas and Thai constellations like Monsteras. I have not had a good time with Monstera and Sony eyes. I don't personally love the Stanleyanas, or I'm sorry, the Stipicanas, but the Stanleyana was really pretty. I thought it was a great variegation. Like again, it's subtle. It's not a like super out there variegation. It has very subtle white with the mint, or not even mint, what would you, I guess mint, like green with just these white patches. It, patches. it looked very like Thai constellation-y, but just small. And so this guy's a prolific grower. It is constantly growing, pushing out runners. It likes to push out runners and then pushes out leaves. So it's looking to climb. I've not given that to it, but I have chopped it, propagated it several times and it's incredibly easy, but it's just a beautiful, like just standard variegation, I would say. It did have this half moon leaf that's doing really well. I've had more half moon leaves like this, um, but they have unfortunately died off because again, this sits on this side of my, of my shelving unit, away from the window, away from my humidifier. And so to keep these white patches white and really like clean, I need to heighten the humidity and I just don't give it that. But it doesn't really bother me because it's still a beautiful variegated plant. And again, very subtle, incredibly easy to care for and grow. Um, I have had this all over the place. I've had this under my Barina Grow Light for months, probably from the beginning I purchased it. 
up until a couple months ago, I moved it up. So it's getting lower light and it's doing just fine. Like it is not changing a bit. So I would say that this is a very easy to care for, um, lower light tolerant plant, like variegated plant that you could definitely get. I do have this in straight terracotta. I water it when the soil is completely dry and it does just fine. Now I forgot to water it and look what's happening. These yellowing leaves, but it, those have been there honestly for probably a month and a half now because I forgot to water it like, you know, months ago um, and then watered it. And now I'm dealing with that. But otherwise it really hasn't given me any grief or fuss and the variegation has stayed the same. So I would say that this is a pretty stable variegation. So those were my top, what did I do? Five, six, seven. I don't remember. Six seven don't know um variegated house plants that i personally own and love and could recommend to any collector now you will notice that what didn't make the list is the pink princess which i do have the philodendron white knight which i do have these ones i could recommend i'm happy with them i'm happy with their variegation and how they act as plants and what their variegation does again pink princess not a stable variegation white knight not a stable variegation and just not for me those were my picks let me know in the comments what your picks are be sure to subscribe so you can see more videos from me and we'll see you next time